So yeah, we're all gonna need therapy after this. Hi, my name is Sydney, welcome back to my channel. Before we launch in, yes, this video is sponsored by Surfshark because we still love each other. Now there's a strong likelihood that this video will ruffle some feathers. And if I'm being totally honest, I really wouldn't be doing my service as an Australian American, unless I made people upset from time to time. I think you mean all the time. It's far too early in the video for you to be here. Go away. So today I wanna to take a look at the idea that the medical side of the transgender movement is a money-making racket. And before we get started, I just want you all to bear in mind, this is a huge topic with a lot of moving parts and there's just no way for me to cover them all in this video. So don't yell at me because it hurts my tender, tender feelings. You don't have any of those. With that being said, I also wanna highlight, this is not directed at the people who transition and go on to lead happy, healthy lives. It's also not directed at the healthcare professionals who actually do their jobs properly, for once. This is simply a look at the nefarious side of the medical complex. Spooky. So yeah, let's get this show on the road. In 1983, a man called Walt Hayer visited a leading gender specialist in San Francisco. After one appointment, the specialist told him that in order to alleviate his feelings of confusion and discomfort, Walt needed to transition to female. By his second appointment, he had a prescription for cross-sex hormones. Eight years later, Walt transitioned back to male. After finding that, gender reassignment did very little to alleviate his original feelings. Just so you're aware, this is after he had the snip. Even back in the 80s, and even before that it seems, a body of medical professionals didn't seem to address underlying traumas or unresolved issues of patients before giving them hormone therapies and surgeries. And that trend and way of thinking seems to persist in some medical circles today. This is the point where I encourage you to strap in. It's about to get bumpy. In 2019, a professor of psychiatry at John Hopkins University said that, when it comes to transgender patients, their mental problems, often depression, discouragement, are the things that need treatment. They're going to be in the hands of doctors for the rest of their lives. Many of them are going to be sterilized, not able to have their own children, and many will regret this. Can you imagine having a life where you need to seek doctors all the time, for everything, just to live? Getting your hormones checked, getting everything checked, that is something doctors should like to spare people of. But instead of sparing patients, more and more anecdotal accounts are indicating that doctors are very quick to prescribe hormones not only to young adults, but puberty blockers to children. Puberty blockers, for those of you who don't know, are drugs designed to postpone puberty in children. Self-explanatory. In the last year, we've seen an explosion in the stories of people regretting their decision to transition. And to compound that are the stories of former transgender patients who claim they were given hormones without any type of proper therapy or assessment. Funnily enough, an example of this is actually Planned Parenthood, who's become the second largest provider of hormone therapy in the United States. Yikes. On their website, they clearly state, you don't need to participate in therapy or provide information from a mental health provider to receive hormone therapy. Here they also detail how to get hormones and at no point in the process is there a mental health evaluation, which maybe should be part of giving people life altering drugs. I don't know, just a suggestion. You know, maybe what they should be giving them instead is a secure internet connection. Which is why today's video is sponsored by Surfshark. Wow, this is without question your worst segue to date. Do you own a computer? Do you own a mobile phone? Do you have access to the internet? If the answer is yes, then you probably need Surfshark. Who's saying that? At this point, you all know that Surfshark is a VPN and it's pretty great for protecting your private information online from hackers and weirdos. Cause nothing ruins your day, quite like people finding your weird cat picture collection. But Surfshark is also terrific for letting you access blocked websites and content and giving you access to other countries' Netflix libraries. So you can destroy your brain watching bad anime and 
What's eating Gilbert Grape? Personally, I use the Surfshark Mozilla add-on a lot to access Australian things because they're almost always geo-locked. Because, truth be told, when I'm not here complaining on the internet, I'm trying to access things in my homeland. So that all being said, use code SYDNEY to get 85% off and an additional three months free. Surfshark also offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there is no risk when you try it out. So click the link in the description and no one will see your weird cat searches. Now, interestingly, at some locations, and with a parent's permission, some children can get puberty blockers through Plant Parenthood. Puberty blocker drugs, in some cases, seem fairly easy to get as well, even though they are not FDA approved for this use and have resulted in thousands and thousands of deaths and complications. Just FYI, these drugs are used for other things too, such as treating endometriosis, for example. The point is, it's not good. Now, because I'm a psychic, I know that some of you at this point are gonna say, but Sydney, the kids can't get the things unless they have parents' consent. And Patricia, you're so right. But I just wanna remind you that parents can have their children taken away if they don't let their kids access transition therapies. Some parents don't really have the option to say no. So that's fun. What's marginally worse here is that doctors have admitted they don't actually know the long-term consequences and effects of puberty blockers on a child's body. Comforting. In 2015, the National Institutes of Health awarded the Boston Children's Hospital $5.7 million to conduct the first, just wanna highlight that, the first study in the US to evaluate the long-term outcomes of giving transgender youths medical treatment, predominantly hormone blockers and cross-sex hormones. Never mind that they've already been giving kids these drugs for literally years. At this point, this kind of just sounds like human experimentation just to see what happens because who even cares, right? It's kind of like when you're 10 and you're conducting your own experiments on flies by catching them and pulling their wings off to see if they grow back. Sydney, no one does that. Yeah, well, they don't grow back, just so you know. Now, one of the most widely prescribed puberty blockers, Lupron, Lupron, however this is pronounced, recently had to update its label to indicate that it causes seizures and serious psychiatric adverse events, such as crying, irritability, impatience, anger, and aggression. Something that I personally found really disturbing here as well is how there are some hospitals and doctors who are proud of themselves for dealing with children and treating children as young as three. I mean, for starters, a three-year-old doesn't know what gender or sex is. They don't really think much of anything. They're three. If they do think anything, it's probably like whether or not dirt has a taste and how much of it they can fit in their mouth. And obviously, more importantly, treating someone from the age of three means over a lifetime, that's a lot of money. And yet, drugs that have not been properly tested or studied on healthy kids, that are not FDA approved for this use, that cause emotional issues, are now endorsed by the American Pediatric Association and codified by international guidelines. Well, cover me in maple syrup and call me a pancake. I don't even know what's happening. I don't wanna make a joke out of this, but this is probably how we end up with real life X-Men. What I find interesting here is that most widely cited studies conclude that most children who experience gender dysphoria or question their gender will naturally come to embrace their birth sex. In addition, some data suggests that transgender people are still likely to commit suicide even after receiving hormone treatment and surgeries. So, this rolls us around to my two main questions. If the majority of children eventually outgrow their gender dysphoria, why are we introducing them to hormonal and even sometimes surgical interventions that they otherwise wouldn't need? And if hormonal therapies and surgical interventions don't necessarily alleviate negative feelings in some adults, then why are they more than likely the first option? Because money. As far as money making goes, the medical industry, particularly in America, is enormous. And when it comes to being transgender, a lifetime of hormone treatment, surgery, therapy, and other treatments can add up real fast. Now, remember how I mentioned Planned Parenthood? Yeah, well, when the company's revenue took a dive with fewer women accessing abortion services by 2016, they expanded into the transgender market. 
In documents, they said that their goal is to diversify their revenue base. And diversify, they did. Based on how many donors and sponsors they have too, I'd also guess that they're getting kickbacks from referring patients to doctors and so on. I'm speculating, of course, but it wouldn't shock me. To be quite honest, nothing shocks me anymore. What can I say? I'm all out of shocks. No shocks given. Okay, thank you, we get it. Now, remember how I also mentioned the puberty blocker Lupron? Well, the companies who manufacture it, Abbott Laboratories and Takeda Chemicals, paid almost $200 million to the Department of Justice for giving doctors illegal kickbacks in exchange for prescribing Lupron to patients. Good stuff. Now, although this happened in 2001 and Lupron does have several other uses, it's not to say that Big Pharma isn't currently operating like this. After all, there is a history of big pharmaceutical companies giving doctors kickbacks for pushing particular drugs. In addition, the cost of Lupron is anywhere from $775 a month, and that over the course of a few years can add up real quick. In fact, in 2017, the drug sales equaled 669 million in the United States alone, a $16 million increase from two years earlier. And with rates of children identifying as transgender currently skyrocketing across the world, there's a bit of money to be made here. So in conclusion, put a fork in me. I'm done. Now, unsurprisingly, this demand has been met with more and more gender youth clinics. In fact, the first opened up in 2007 by Boston's Children's Hospital and has since been joined by over 40 others nationwide. But this explosion is also happening for adults as well. In a 14-year span, one study found that gender-affirming surgeries increased by fourfold. By 2016, this allegedly increased again by 19%. And seeking this sort of surgery isn't cheap, with a huge portion of people paying out of pocket. Over the past decade, medical infrastructure to support and treat transgender people has proliferated, and a lot of hospitals and doctors have seized the opportunity to be the front runners in the industry, opening specialized wings, clinics, and training doctors to do specific surgeries. And here, I wanna remind you, this is to accommodate 0.6% of the population. Yes. Just over half a percent. Can't quite work out how to cure cancer or anything like that, but kid, we gotcha. We can stop your puberty. Honestly, I think the reason why this is happening is also reasonably simple too. People like Jazz Jennings, Caitlyn Jenner, and other celebrities have made it look fun and easy when the truth is, transitioning is an incredibly hard road. And most people who decide to traverse it don't have the enormous bank account of someone like Caitlyn Jenner. If you go on crowdfunding websites, you quickly learn how many people are scraping together their pennies just to fund their transitions. It's not nice. To compound this, education bodies have started integrating transgender theory into classrooms, telling kids that their sex is malleable and fluid. Personally, I think this is a little weird to do for half a percent of the population but I guess weirder things have happened. Further than that, we now have a third option on birth certificates and driver's licenses. Most websites list a third option when you're identifying your sex. We are given instruction on how to use gender neutral language or inclusive language. So if you've now taught an entire generation of young people and children that sex can be changed, glamorized it in the media and in pop culture, and taught people that there are more than two sexes, it's very unsurprising to me that there would in fact be an explosion in people seeking out transgender medical therapies and treatment. Then you factor in the cost of surgeries and other things like laser hair removal, voice therapy, and so on, and you're looking at an exorbitant amount of money. No matter which way you want to slice it and dice it, being transgender is a lifelong cost, and you can bet your bottom dollar that big pharma and the medical industry are making bank as a result. I know this, of course, because I am a wizard. Now, obviously, I've only touched on a fraction of this topic, and there are so many other factors. But we've seen a huge medical expansion for a tiny, but growing, portion of the population. And at this point, at least to me, it seems pretty clear that the medical industry is basically taking people's suffering and turning it into a money-making venture. We're currently manufacturing a gender crisis that will have irreversible and horrible damaging effects for individuals 
further down the line. And rather than stopping the indoctrination in schools and also addressing the mental health aspect of all of this, instead we're just pumping people full of expensive and sometimes untested drugs and calling it a day. Now obviously there are medical professionals out there who do the right things by their patients, who treat them with respect and treat this overall issue with respect, and I think that's really great and they should be recognized and acknowledged for doing that. But for the ones who don't, including big pharma companies, Planned Parenthood, and so on, these are the people that need to be held accountable for exploiting people. At the end of the day, I am of the opinion that we should be questioning much more why this issue is being popularized and glamorized the way that it is. Because I can bet you almost anything it has very little to do with human rights and has everything to do with money. Now before I open the floor to you, this is just a reminder that you can download Surfshark VPN using the link in the description. When you do, you receive 85% off and an additional three months free. Yes. Now I open the floor to all of you. What do you all think? Do you believe that the transgender medical complex is in fact a money-making racket? Do you believe that we have it all wrong and actually these companies and these people really do care about transgender individuals? And what do you generally make of this issue overall? As always, if you like the video, hit subscribe and the thumbs up button. If you want to leave a comment, feel free to do so. Just be respectful about it. And I will see you guys next time.